All right, Tristan, it's time to talk about the eight coaching hires. One fourth of all coaches in the NFL have been hired. Let's talk about those. And I had these, I was thinking about how to do the order. I was thinking about maybe ranking them from eight to one, one to eight, four, then two, then seven. And I just decided that I'm just going to grade them. Act like each, each of them is a, a paper that you had to write in class and each one of them has a grade in no particular order. Let's just start out with my hot take, Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator from Dallas. Yep. who seemingly turned Dallas around and up until they played a terrible game um, against a couple of teams toward the end of the season. Yeah, particularly you know, that Packers game. Green Bay owned them. Down. <laughs> it, it owned them. Uh, but I'll tell you this, uh, Dan Quinn, my hot take on him is uh, I've watched a lot of reviews. I've watched a lot of ranking episodes of different podcasts, different sports talk and most people have Dan Quinn near the bottom of the list. I have him rated as an A minus, and I'll tell you why. When you look at his coaching tree, Tristan, his first year at Atlanta, he hired both Lafleur's. By the way, one became a head coach of the Packers: Mike McDaniel, Raheem Morris, who we'll talk about shortly, Kyle Shanahan. This guy, while he may not be the best head coach fundamentally. He puts the people around him. He's like a president with a really good cabinet, you know? Right. And we saw that he operates really well with a quarterback, a talented quarterback. That's one thing that he may be lacking going where he's going. Now, is hiring a defensive coordinator right for the commanders right now? What do you think? So I think this is interesting. You know... Credit really kind of goes to Colin Cowherd. He's been the guy screaming, you don't hire a defensive coach as your head coach. He's been screaming that for years, and it feels like the collective football world has called up to that. I agree with him um, completely. I just think in this day and age, it's the wrong move. However, in this situation for Washington, I don't hate it as much as I normally would. I'm giving this hire like a B because, Ryan, I think you have to – you got to remember, this is, the Washington Commanders are coming out of the Dan Snyder mess. They might change their name again. They need. They want to try to build a new stadium. They have. They are trying to make reach a turning point as a franchise. They need stability. They're not bringing someone in to win now and go win championships as much as they are just bringing in someone that can bring some stability. And like you said, Dan Quinn hired really good staff in Atlanta. Made it to a Super Bowl with Shanahan as his coordinator. Ended up forty three and forty two, five hundred you know record. Not bad. I think Dan Quinn will do what the commanders need him to do because the they basically got turned down by Ben Johnson. That was the that was the go to. I thought that's who they were going to turn to. They wanted it. Uh, well, who didn't? Right. <laughs> but look, I, I think the commanders could really use him. The defense did struggle. There's talent all over the offense. Uh, you know, Dan Quinn's a, a Pete Carroll coaching product, right? Like he he coached with Carroll. He's a byproduct of Pete Carroll and. He's a smart coach, and I know that he has a bad rep for being at Atlanta and blundering the Super Bowl and uh, just not doing too well there. But I think he's he took rehab- Atlanta to a Super Bowl. I-, I think he's rehabilitated, though. I think I think he's there. And let yeah. me tell you the the steps he's taken. He he hired Kingsbury, right? And while Kingsbury, uh, while Kingsbury is not a great head coach, we saw that at Arizona. I think he may have just made the jump from tech too early to you know college to pro. Yeah, I think he needed some more time, and I think this is a great landing spot for Kingsbury. I think the offense is going to uh, keep excelling under him. Kingsbury is a good coordinator. Like, yeah, he, he really is. And what what? So this is the combo that I'm looking at. Okay, I'm looking at D'Amico and I'm looking at Slowick over at at the Texans, right? Uh-huh. And I'm saying Quinn and Kingsbury have they have to replicate this if they want a decor to work in this situation. Uh, or, or a defensive-minded coach to work right. in this situation. But, but do you know what helps a lot? is when you've got a guy like C.J. Stroud at quarterback. So that, that to me, is what hangs so, over the organization, is that number two pick and where they go with it. And where I think they should go is LSU's Jaden Daniels. Interesting. I think, I think he's a perfect fit for this offense. I think he would work well under Kingsbury. Mm. I think it's designed for a quarterback like Daniels to come in succeed it's gonna you know they're one to two years out before you can really judge too harshly 
they're not a team, you know, like we'll talk about in a minute, the Chargers where we expect them to pick up and possibly go win a Super Bowl with a new right. head coach. Right. That's not where the commanders are. However, with Dan Quinn, I think he's going to take this organization, turn it into something really special. And I, I just, I really think that an A minus is a perfect grade for Dan Quinn right now. I like it. I'm going B, but I think he's the guy to get this organization headed in the right direction. It's interesting to see what they're going to do with uh, the second pick. We talk about Pete Carroll. Let's go ahead and talk about where Pete Carroll came from. That's the okay. Seattle Seahawks. So Mike McDonald, I keep wanting to say McDaniel. There's too many Mike and McDaniels and Mike really and McDonald's. Is. I know. So this is Mike McDonald. Uh, us from the South, we, we yeah. emphasize the Mac. I'm just going to call um, him Ravens guy. Another defensive coach. Another defensive coach who took this Ravens defense and turned it into one of the best defenses we've seen since the Ray Lewis era. Uh, he broke records and yards allowed, points allowed. I mean, you just name it, he broke them. And this defense was everything you wanted it to be and more up until they faced who's going to the Super Bowl. Sure. And by the way, they still shut out Kansas City in the right. second half. You don't watch that yep. playoff game and say, man, the defense really needed to do better. <laughs> right. Like, they did their the, job. Look, the the guy wins everywhere he goes. Yep. I mean, just he's he's been at the Ravens, and he's won throughout the Ravens. He also had a short stint with the other Harbaugh. Right, uh, right. That's, at, where, at that's where he got him. Yeah. Uh, I think one year under Harbaugh at Michigan, I believe. I believe so. Young so guy. He's two, in his 30s. But, right. Um. He added Les- Leslie Frazier, you know, close to Buffalo here um, as his assistant head coach. I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good move, um, mm-hmm. getting experience in at a, another high level because he is a young head coach. We, he's the youngest head coach now in the NFL, right? And so we're going to kind of see where he lands in this world of of head coaches being a defensive minded guy. Is he mm-hmm. going to be the guy that changes things? Because right now we're seeing a an offensive head coach world. And yes. you and I just talked before the show started. A lot of these guys we're going to discuss in this segment are defensive coaches. So are the tides turning or is this just the pick of the crop and this is just who's available? Um, one thing I do want to point out that he said, um, he said experience wouldn't be near the top of his list. And he said that in reference to finding an OC or a, or a DC. Do you think that's smart? I I guess it depends on the context. I, I haven't seen this quote that you're talking about. My opinion would be if he means they don't have to have been an offensive coordinator before for me to hire them, then I'm okay with that. I, I think a lot of times the the good move for these guys is to go get someone that maybe they see potential and look at what D'Amico Ryans has done, you know, bringing in Slowick and stuff. So it, we are seeing this younger generation take over in the NFL, right? It's the wave of young guys and they're bringing in even younger guys and doing it their way. So I don't think being a a former coordinator is a prerequisite. uh, So I have no problem with that. But I am genuinely confused by Seattle doing this just because you move off of Pete Carroll, which I understand. I think it was probably time to move off of Pete Carroll, but to move off of a defensive guy and bring in a young defensive guy when a lot of people said they were going to bring in Dan Quinn because of his ties or maybe go Vrabel, you pivot, go Mike McDonald, who is a really great coach. I just find it interesting for an organization who has a great GM with John Lynch. I know they're at a bit of a crossroads. I know the quarterback thing is in question. They're not drafting high enough to go draft somebody, but it just seems like an well, interesting move. I really thought they were going to pivot completely and go offense, and they did. I did too. I did too. And look, Gino is the interim guy, right? He was he's designed to be there for a couple of years and you know right. just bridge the gap until they can get somebody else in there. But, but but the problem is when you bridge the gap successfully like that and you're picking sixteen to you know twenty, you're not gonna be able to get a guy. So exactly. I don't, I don't then, know what the move is. And then like you said, you bring in a, a, a defensive guy to run this organization who has never had coached before. Right. It, it did it just seemed like a weird move for me. I'm going to give him a C plus here because I just don't know. I just yeah. don't know what's going to happen. And it that, could you can end up say being that, a home run. You can say that about a lot of guys, and you know that's why I'm not ranking them one to eight. It's just what I see right now at this very moment. I give it a C plus because uh, I think they they had better options out there. I agree. Um, and, and if you're talking about defensive guys with a, with a track record, I mean, why wouldn't you turn Vrabel? I mean, for yeah, that matter, I know. Like, why take a risk on such a a young guy, which I know he did great the Ravens, but he has no head coaching experience. It's a different Vrabel, job. 
Yeah. Vrabel didn't do bad at the Titans. He just had mm-hmm. bad leadership. Um, I think Vrabel uh, had a similar instance with Belichick, though, is where he wanted a lot of control. I mean, we heard that from Tennessee. That's one of the things that started to create the friction there. So maybe Seattle wasn't willing to turn it over. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let any head coach have total control like that. But yeah, especially when you're John Lynch, one of the best GMs in the league. So so you didn't give us your grade. I gave it C plus. What do you think? I'm with you. C plus. I think. Not not because of who the person is, but because of the direction. Just going de- young defensive head coach, that makes it a C+. Plus. I think Mike McDonald was the best defensive candidate out there. I just don't like that direction for an organization that I thought was entering a new chapter. And it just feels like, okay, let's try to recreate the Legion of Boom. That's great, but you got to have a quarterback to win Super Bowls. Legion of Boom. Look, let's let's switch sides here a little bit. Let's still keep it within the Pete Carroll coaching tree, and let's okay. talk about Dave Canales. Who? One of my Dave Canales. <laughs> Never heard uh, of him. One of my favorite guys uh, within this head coaching carousel here. Um, he's going to the Panthers. He's going to get a, the fuck up. You had no <laughs> idea who Dave Canales was a week ago, did you? Because I, I didn't. I've done a whole lot of research, and okay. since then, I really enjoy the guy. And I'll okay. tell you why. Um, I, he's going to get a B plus from me. Okay, so pretty high up there in my ranking skills. B plus is where he's going. He's an offensive guy, right? So he's obviously was the Bucks' offensive coordinator this past year. Yeah, what he's done in the quarterback position with Baker. Is not just Baker. He revitalized Geno. Mm. He he's worked with the Manning. You know it, he's it, that's he's right. done he's done several quarterback things that have just been very impressive. He's got a good track record. Okay, nobody was able to do it with Mayfield. Nobody that's until true. Canales came in. He did and, that one Tuesday with Sean McVay turned out really well, but then he got shipped back <laughs> off. But that was great. Cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so. Let's talk about uh, kind of the pieces around him. The defensive staff isn't changing, so he's going to uh, be not? able to keep. He's going to be able to keep a, a great defense um, because Tampa Bay uh, is, or I'm sorry, the, the Panthers have um, they have, have pieces have, have have pieces all around him. But uh, uh, I on, think that's on. good for stability for him. Here's I think the problem, though, Ryan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you've got notes. I've just got to interject here because this is the elephant in the room. It's the owner. Okay, this is the problem with this organization. I think this is the reason he gets the job is because no one would touch this job. Ben Johnson's not going there. Slowick's not going there. The owner wants to micromanage everything. He literally is in the football meetings. He's telling them what kind of plays to call. And then on Sundays, he's throwing his drink on fans. He's a spoiled brat. Now that Dan Snyder's gone, he is the worst owner in the NFL. I don't like this word, but he's a toxic owner. He is. So this job... Is a, You're walking into a disaster. The only guy that was going to take it is a guy like Dave Canales, who, let's be honest, I mean, great track record, okay, he wasn't going to get this opportunity anywhere else, but no one wanted this job. That's I like Dave Canales, too. Like, I'm okay. I think he can do well. I, I like them trying to get somebody to unlike Bryce Young, but with the owner hanging over everything, how the hell is this guy supposed to manage that, man? Well, so they got a new GM with Dan Morgan, and, and he's supposed to be really really good. Um, I'm sure he he's, is. He's on fire for the Panthers. He played at the Panthers, I believe. So did and, Frank Reich. And I just think that this is a really good landing spot for Canales because he really has nothing to lose. No. You know, if it doesn't work out, he can Back go be an yep. offensive coordinator somewhere else or um, a quarterback coach. He's obviously pretty good at that. Right. But I just think getting in there with Bryce Young and having a guy that has worked so well with other quarterbacks um, – and have really transformed other quarterbacks into something you know we didn't think they would ever be. Maybe he can do the same thing with Bryce. So Bryce is in that perfect position to be transformed by Dave Canales. Dave Canales, I ha- I'm I'm going to have to give this grade an I. It's incomplete <laughs> because I can't. I'm I'm grading the owner, man. We'll see if Tepper gets out of the way. Okay, this is like a C, you know, I've, given the situation. But I just am not counting on anything from this terrible I'm, organization i'm given a b plus by default because like you said nobody else would take it but i, I really do think that uh you know at least somebody <laughs> did the work and turned in the homework assignment Good point. Uh, for Good god's point. sakes but look, look okay let's move on from that because we could keep talking about that owner all day long and sure. uh, hopefully that changes in the next 10 years um let's talk about raheem morris okay he's going to the falcons um we all gonna, thought it was belichick well, 
we did, but um, like you said, the control thing is a is a big deal. Yeah, uh, I, I think, think that Raheem was Morris is a is a pretty good fit here. I, I'm going to give him a B minus. Um, obviously, he had a stint at the Bucks about 15 years ago. That didn't really go as planned, but he was still young in the league, and you know he had to go and and earn his rank and work the way up, and he's done that. Um, since then, though, he's been a, a Super Bowl winning defensive coordinator with McVay. You got to put that on your resume when you go in for a head coaching interview, right? Right. Mention it. Uh, he also, uh, I think this is a great move. So he stole Zach Robinson from the Rams and put him in as offensive coordinator. Right. And and Zach Robinson is a mastermind when it comes to running an offensive scheme. So you got a, a D cord like Raheem Morris coming in to be a head coach. He's obviously going to have that defense worked out. The Falcons defense is already really, really good. Um, they were top 10 up until, what, probably midway through the season. Things kind of fell apart. But I, I think you can you get this team back up. I think the talent's there. Um, you just have to have a leader come in and kind of pick it back up, get it polished off, and say, hey, here's our defense. This is what we can be. I think Raheem Morris can do that. He's also putting pieces in. Like I said, Robinson, it, with the offense, and the, the thing is, this offense has struggled because – they haven't had a quarterback. <laughs> right, right. That's, That's the really key what element. burned Arthur Smith, too. That's Him it. Hitching his and wagon to Desmond Ritter. I mean, you're done and not knowing how to use his personnel. And look, just when you think that, you know, everybody's hiring an offensive coordinator and it's going to work great for him, look to Arthur Smith. Didn't really right. work out too well there. And he's an offensive genius, they said. Great point. Sucked. Sucked yeah. really bad. So I think the Falcons ha- got burned so bad by that that they said, you know what? We're going 180 here. We're hiring a defensive guy. And it will work on the defense because when you look at their division, you can win with a right. really good defense. Right, right, right. That's the thing. You when you got to look at these these divisions when these head coaches are hired. This is such a great point. It, it just you, it depends on your situation. Yeah, you can't look at the entire league as a whole. Yeah, you may face one of these teams that have a great offensive coordinator on down the road in a playoff right. match or a Super Bowl. But what you got to worry about is getting that division win first. Right, exactly. Because you win the division. That's the most important thing as a head coach. That's exactly right. That's how you get in the playoffs. And I'll even take it one step further from you talking about the division. Just you can make it more bilateral. Look at the conference. If you're in the yeah. NFC, what? you if you look if you're in the AFC, you have to have an offense and a quarterback. You're not getting to the Super Bowl without beating Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Herbert. In the NFC, yeah. you don't have to do that. Okay, a team can win a football game. You can make it deep run in the playoffs with a good defense. This is an A plus hire for me. I love it. Um, yeah, I, obviously it could I, crash and burn, but I think he's going to build a culture there, and I think that's something they've desperately been lacking. And I think he's going to have that defense mean and play in physical football, and that's going to be enough to help them win a lot of football games. I love this hire. Tell me, in that division, the NFC South, who are you most afraid of on offense? It's got to be the Bucks, right? Absolutely, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The yep. Panthers are getting a whole new work up with Dave Canales, so we don't know what they're going to be. Right, and uh, got the Saints. Young. I mean. They're good sometimes, and then most of the time they're not. They're a joke. Then you got the Bucks. You know they're retaining Mayfield, right. and their offense is a powerhouse. And they won their division. Um, you know, I mean they they were nine and eight. So the Falcons were seven and ten. There's nothing that tells me that Raheem Morris couldn't pull them up to Absolutely. a nine and eight or or a ten and seven team. Agreed. Just by next year, if they can figure out that quarterback. That's all they really need. Right. Call and, Chicago, see if you can get in the Justin Field sweepstakes. I mean, I'm he would elevate you, you a lot. I'm telling you, it, it could work. Let's go to kind of the what everybody thinks is the best hire, and I'm going to agree with him. It's Jim Harbaugh uh, going to the Chargers. Now, what is there to say about this one? I mean, nothing but good, right? A plus. I will. I will take one step back and go A instead of A plus, and I'll tell you why. I know Harbaugh has done it on the college level. He's been to the highest of highs, and he's won the biggest of the biggest championships. What he's going to be expected to do, getting into this Chargers organization, what have we said for the past three years? That the Chargers are a disaster? Injuries. They need yeah. a head coach, right? Yep. We have said that over and over. If Staley was not there, what could Herbert be? We've kind of said the same thing here recently about um, McDermott and Allen. Right. What Harbaugh is going to be expected to do is a tall task, but people are going to want him to win a Super Bowl within the first, maybe the second year, but high hopes for the first. 
And well, so I think uh, I think you got to be realistic about the situation though, because they're in cap hell. Like the the one thing not a lot of people are talking about with this team. I didn't mean to totally cut you off. I'm sorry. Is Yes, obviously, you've got Harbaugh, you've got Herbert. That's a great combination. Harbaugh is always going to have good uh, trench play, his offensive and defensive line. He doesn't get credit for being physical. Harbaugh and his football teams are always very physical, but you're in a division with Mahomes, uh, Sean Payton's there, the AFC. It's not going to be easy. Uh, They're going to have to deal with the cap. I think the first year or two might be a little rocky, but they should be competing for the division in three years. Uh, But this is the only way you could go with the hire. You had to get... You had to dole out the checkbook and get somebody that could tap into Justin Herbert and fulfill his potential. You have what everybody in the league wants, a franchise quarterback, and they were wasting him. This was the smart move. I am worried for how long Harbaugh's been out of the league. I feel like that's a point we're glossing over. Ten years, well, a lot of thing, a lot of things can change. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not like he took ten years off. I mean, he was over there winning a national championship in, in that's college, fair. right? That's so, fair. And we're seeing more and more the NFL slowly kind of merge and mix with college. I mean, it's a lot These of college the same, coaches won't out because it's yeah, such it's a, a disaster. Well, it's it's a lot of the same parallels, right? Right. And and look. Let's not forget that Harbaugh had massive success with the 49ers. Absolutely. Made it to the Super Bowl. Almost won um, it. <laughs> very close. But look, I, I think this is a great hire, right? I mean, you can deny that. I'm not going to go you know, AWOL here and say that it, it's not. He's but a winner. What I am going to say is I just think that, and you, you said this, not me. You said if you use common sense and say, you know, think about their cap space and People, fans aren't going to do that. These fans no. that are just these, um, you know, well, fly good by news the seat is of they don't pants. have a lot of fans. So, well, no, the fly by the seat of your pants fans, you know, the ones that expect, like, oh, we got a head coach in here. Now we're going to win a Super Bowl. I, I just, I, I would, I would back down my expectations, pump the brakes a little bit, some may say. Yeah. And just give him time. Give him time. But what he can do with Herbert, man, th- I hate that he got hired on at the Chargers, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Uh, because w- they were already tough for us to face. They're going to be even tougher now. Same well, the, with Kansas City. Uh, last thing, no excuses anymore for Herbert. None. Because he's been let None. off the hook a lot by NFL media. It's put up or shut up time. That's absolutely right. Let's move over to the Raven or uh, the Raiders. I'm sorry, and let's talk what? about Antonio Pierce. Um, Antonio Pierce, obviously, he was retained as the coach. He was interim last year. He's going to be the head coach now. I'm going to give this a B plus because okay. he's got control of the locker room. He's proven that he can win. He's a players' coach. the The players vouched for him. That's okay. part of the reason why he became the coach. And I think he's proved that he can get it done. He he beat. Uh, I mean, he scored 63 points on. Some team. Right. Can't even beat remember the, who it was. It was the, the Chargers. Chiefs, uh, beat the Chiefs once. Um, lost once as well. And um, look, I, I think he finished second, obviously, behind the Chiefs this year. And that was midway through he picked up and, and had a pretty good second half of the season uh, once they kicked that piece of dirt to the road of Josh McDaniels. Yeah, what a loser. I think Antonio Pierce is the guy for the job because I don't really know where you would pivot from here. The only guy I would say... If you want to stick in the defensive realm, as you know, Mike Vrabel at the time, you could have maybe made a call to him. But I think the guys are just behind Antonio Pierce. Yeah, I think this is a great retention. I don't see anything that could go wrong with it. One thing I will say about the Raiders is, my gosh, you are the least talented team in that division. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be an uh, an uphill battle. Uh, and you but, still managed to come in second. So right. and and they <laughs> kudos. They don't have a quarterback. That's a big problem for them. They're not drafting There's a high lot enough of people to get a that don't have quarterbacks. I know, but when you're in the division with Mahomes and Herbert, that's kind of a big deal. You have it's, to. It's different than if you're, you know, the Falcons can survive not having a quarterback like we were talking about. The Raiders cannot. Here's the thing. I'm going to give this higher a C. I feel like, and let me let me just pivot and ask you, do not do you feel like the Raiders were kind of pressured into hiring Antonio Pierce by the fan base, by the yeah, players? by the players. It felt I like do. they didn't have a choice because well, when this happened a couple of years ago and Rick Basaccia was the interim, they made it to the playoffs. Fans. They didn't hire Rick Basaccia. <laughs> Everybody got mad. It, they hired Josh McDaniels. It was a disaster. So it's like, Obviously, they couldn't make the same mistake twice. I get that, but I just felt like I don't know. Did it like there wasn't a better candidate out there? I don't know. Well, but who? Because I mean, you okay? Say you you call Vrabel. How much better is he going to make this team than Antonio Pierce? I agree. And how much more is he going to cost you? No, I I I, I agree. The only way I, you get better is if you got like a Johnson or a Slowick or an offensive wizard. But they're not going to touch that job because. It's like, I'm not going to go play Mahomes and Herbert four times a year and have no quarterback. Right. It's a tall task. 
But look, Antonio Pierce has has proven he can beat the Chiefs. Um, right. I think it's a it, will, decent hire. I think it's will, like a C. Yeah. I mean, will will it maintain? Can he can he do what nobody else has done in that league and you know win the division uh, with such low talent? Probably not. But you know, I've been surprised before. Okay. All right. Let's move over to the Titans and talk about Brian Callahan. I'm going to give this a C plus. Um, he, he was offensive coordinator for the Bengals, right? And he he did wonders with Joe Burrow. Um, can he do the same for Levis? I, I don't know. I don't know if Levis is the best guy for that job. I think he is. I, I think, think he's, he's the best one he, they got. Yeah. I, I think he's proven he's got the arm talent to do it. Um, he's got the drive, kind of like Josh Allen. He has that like kind of what I call farm boy mentality, where yeah. he just he's rough and tough and you know, doesn't seem to mind bumps and bruises. No, uh, he'll take a but hit. But it's a good move for the Titans to get an offensive guy in there, especially in the league that you're in. When you're talking about the Colts and the Jags and the Texans, all these organizations with high-powered offenses right. at times, you got to get somebody in there. It, look, the D'Amico Ryan situation at the Texans is – in the slow it combination, that's kind of like a one in hundred thousand chance, right? It's, right, right. It doesn't happen every day where things just fall perfectly. And then, oh by the way, you have C.J. Stroud, which is a game changer for exactly. anybody. I think this is still C plus for me because I think they could have done better. Yeah, I think they could have went and got somebody better. Um, I don't really know who that. I, I number one, I think firing Vrabel was a mistake anyway. I agree, so, but the relationship had kind of soured, so I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know if I blame them as much for fire and Vrabel as I blame them for letting it get to that point. Does that make sense? Like, I think where they were at, they didn't have much of a choice, but I, they they could have stopped it you, before it got there. Would you rather had Brian Callahan or Ben Johnson here? Oh, Ben Johnson, because to me, the I, I, I don't want to be a contrarian, but I, I think Brian Callahan, this hire is a D for me. Because yeah, I just we're, we're close, I, right? Because we've talked about this a lot. How many times have you watched the Bengals and been like, their offense is simple? You know, they don't it's, have a real special identity. The thing that makes them special is Joe Burrow. I do like Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor is a good head football coach, and he's an offensive guy. And you would feel like watching the Bengals, there would be times where the offense would just get totally, you know, void of creativity and fall in these lulls, and they would finally pull out of it. I felt like that was Zach Taylor. I have never in my life watched anything Brian Callahan has schemed up and thought he was a wizard. I feel like this is another situation similar to the Panthers. Maybe they That's just perfect. didn't have a lot of options. Maybe a well, lot of people weren't willing to take that job. I had it written down. That was my next point I was going to talk about. I've never been overly impressed with anything the Bengals have put out in the field. No. But when it when it's worked, it's worked. But I think that's a, a byproduct of Joe Burrow and the three receivers, amazing yeah. wide receivers that they have, right? Um, it sure wasn't the offensive line. It sure wasn't the schematics. No, it, it wasn't anything except for just sheer talent being at its finest. It, it felt that like was the it. talent was overcoming the scheme, not so like you, the scheme was elevating the talent. Exactly. So you tell me that Callahan's going to come in here with less talent, much less oh, talent, horrible line, no receivers, a basically you know second a year quarterback, quarterback. That, a quarterback that we don't know right. uh, what he could be. It's going to be rough. Number one, you got to get receivers in there. Yes. You have to. And you got to fix the line. Number one priority. Uh, well, that, they're, they're, that's on the GM, too. Sure. Yeah. But I don't care who it's on. I don't care if the janitor is responsible for it. You got to get it fixed. Somebody Man, get hey, who's a getting fired if it doesn't there. work? Brian Callahan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it falls on his shoulders first. Right. The trickle down, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Last and certainly least, I know I said I wasn't going to rank these, but this has got to be one of the worst hires I've seen in quite some time. Really? We're going to talk about Jared Mayo. Shut Gerard, yeah. Uh, Gerard Mayo. I, I've heard it both ways in the interviews I've watched today. So uh, Have you really, or are you Mayo. doing that quote again? No, no, no. I really okay. have. That, no lie. No lie. For people who don't um, watch I'll, the I'll show, show anytime, the anytime you correct Ryan on something, he goes, eh, I've heard it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually comes from a show called Psych, and right. you should watch it. Um, but look, this is it, it's status quo. It's another defensive guy who's been at the Patriots. Yes, thank um, you. He, he's, he's only coached since 2019. Uh, also, Rabel was available played there at the Patriots. Right. If you're going to go defense and stick it to the defensive coordinator uh, type mindset, 
and bring them into a head coach. Why wouldn't you go Vrabel? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know, because the Patriots are a terrible organization from top down. They can't get it together. And honestly, mm. I think they needed a complete restart here. Yeah. I think going the way of Mayo is Belichick too. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it is. And well, it's not even two. It's like Belichick one and a half. He's yeah. never going to be a full Belichick, you know? He's going to be a Bella half check. <laughs> and so I, I think that when you, when you look at, well, it works. Um, when you look at all of the available head coaches yeah. in this carousel this time around, you had better options. And to go to Mayo is just, as a Patriots fan, I would be so depressed. I would just be like, okay, so we have no quarterback. We have a, a defense that's failing. We have no receivers, and now we have a head coach that really is just like the guy that just left, right? except a little bit younger. So, I am along... What, what's your oh, grade? Oh, by the way, I'm D-. minus. Okay, so... Th- th- I refuse to give anybody an F. The agreed, because you never so, know. This is right. a hard one, though, because the honest answer is not. not a single person knows anything about Gerard Mayo except Robert Kraft. That's that's the bottom line. No one knows. And he has obviously been the successor as planned for a while because it was written into his contract. Because if it wasn't written into his contract, they would have had to do more interviews because of the Rooney rule. But because he was had it written into his contract that he was a successor to Belichick, it was done. There was never a coaching search because he yep. was the hire. So... I, I, you know how many people they interviewed? Zero. <laughs> Gerard Mayo when they Mayo. told him he had the job. That, yep. So that wasn't that thing. was just a lunch love, date. <laughs> yeah, right. I love Robert Kraft. Okay, I really do. And especially I reading a Patriot book last year and kind of studying his rise to become who he is. He's uh, a great guy. He's a great owner, and he's made good decisions. He's the one that hired Belichick. He he had his eyes set on. He was like, "This is the guy." I have to believe he sees something that we don't. All the players that have played with Gerard Mayo said he was excellent. Everybody who has been around him said he is a leader. That is great. I think he will be a decent head coach. What I am conflicted about by with this hire, I give it a C. It could work out, and he could be tremendous. It could crash and burn. What I don't like is exactly what you said. It's staying with the status quo. If you're wanting to finally turn the page from the Belichick era, and you just hire a Belichick disciple that's been there, it seems like this was the opportunity for the Patriots to have a complete revamp. And instead they said, okay, we'll just get the younger version of what we had. That's where I have a problem. It's it's not the the person that they hired. It's the, you know, where they went with the scheme of the hire, I guess to say. And here's the big picture. We just talked about, you have to look at these divisions. And when you look at the AFC East, right, it is arguably the most high powered offensive league or offensive division in all of NFL. Right. With the Bills, the Dolphins, the Jets. You know, if Aaron Rodgers comes back, it could be crazy good. Who knows? Um, and then you got the Patriots. And the Patriots were 4-13 and last year. So you mean to tell me that the Patriots are 4-13 and in an offensive division, you're going to bring in a status quo guy as part of the system. This is like, you know, having another establishment president. Or whoever party you want, to, it's the next guy in line, right? It's just he's supposed to be there because he's worked his way up, and that's it. That's it. There's no credibility behind him whatsoever. No, that's the what only I person hate that about knows this. is Robert Kraft. We have no idea. Tristan, if if he was such a great, I mean, we hear about some of these coordinators being so good. We know about Ben Johnson. We know Slowick's really good. Right. Like, when's the last thing you heard about anything Mayo's done that's, like, superb? You haven't. The only reason you know about him is because he has been the successor, and it's kind of that's been it. leaked out. Because when they remember when they re- did that press release last year? They were like, we have signed Gerard Mayo to a three-year contract to stay with the Patriots. It's like, why are you putting out a statement on a, you know, staff guy? Like, it, it's bizarre. It could work. Like, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea what kind of coach Gerard Mayo will be. I assume he will be decent, but... I just can't get over the fact that you're supposed to turn the page and me, rebuild this organization. You have the third pick in the draft. You can get a quarterback, and you're going to just stay in that Belichick lane. You know, you're on the highway. You're in the middle lane. The car in front of you gets over, and you don't pick up the pace. You just keep going 65. It, it, it yeah. baffles me. Yeah, I just I don't see why they didn't pivot to an offensive guy and right. completely flip the script of the Patriots for the past 
How long was Belichick there? Yeah. 17 20, years, yeah. 20 years, something like that. Or someone well, fresh, even if it's not an offensive guy, just a fresh voice. It just yeah. it seems like a weird decision to me. But I do trust Robert Kraft. So. But look, that's that's all the coaches, man. That's all of them. That's all eight. We have talked about them all. What is your favorite hire of all these coaches? I know we talked about grades and everything. I know we could go back and see your highest grade, but what is your personal, grades aside, your personal favorite hire? Uh, the the two that stick out to me, uh, obviously Harbaugh to the Chargers. Right. That was the uh, only let's, move. Let's, let's kind of like just put that to the side because we all know that that's probably the best. Okay, Raheem Morris to Atlanta. I think they, really? I think they needed that. I think he's going to build a culture they've been lacking. Um, I, I don't know. I just really like that hire. I think he's going to have them competing in that division. Uh, but I've got to ask you, though, before we move on and in this segment, on a scale of 1 to 10, how shocked are you that Vrabel and Belichick are not going to be head coaches this year? Belichick doesn't surprise me as much. Really? You're not um, surprised? Yeah. No, no. I, I, and I honestly don't know if he'll ever coach again. I know some people say that you know he could take this year off and you know go do kind of like a uh, uh, Sean Payton type situation where he goes and talks for a year and then right. gets offered. But who's going to want I, him I a just, year later? He's a year right. older. I, just don't, I don't think he's going to do that. I think it, it's kind of funny that him and Saban, who are actually good friends in real life, retired the same year. Yeah. Um, Saban, Belichick, but, and Pete Carroll. Right. But I don't think he comes back personally. Uh, could be wrong. Probably will be. Um, <laughs> Vrabel, though, I am surprised. Uh, especially, I really, I had high hopes for him going to the Pats because He's a Pats guy. Like I he thought was, he was going to the Seahawks. So, well, I th- I thought the Pats was just a perfect fit for him. Yeah. Um, because of just his history with them. Yeah. And it just doesn't matter, I guess. Mayo had it in his contract, so that's what they went with. Uh, what about you? Are you surprised? I I am, man. I'm sorry. Like I'm actually more surprised by Belichick not having a job than I am by Vrabel because you know I'm okay. not as high on Vrabel as everybody else is. We had an episode talking about looking at his statistics and stuff. The thing is. I'm not high on him. It's just he's no, no, half I know. Belichick's age. So. I understand. My thing is, I, I know what has happened recently with Patriots. I know we can't unsee it, but I, I can't imagine having an organization like the Cowboys or the Eagles. I, I'm not as shocked that like the Commanders or somebody didn't hire him. I am genuinely shocked that the Cowboys didn't fire Mike McCarthy and bring him in. I'm shocked that the Eagles didn't fire Sirianni and bring him in because that's where he could have excelled. He could have excelled with like going and teaming up with Jerry Jones and saying, hey, look, we've got a quarterback. We've got a great roster. We just need you to drive the car. Same with the Eagles. We've got Jalen Hurts. We've got Howie Roseman, the best GM in the league. We just need you to take the keys and roll with it. He would have been perfect for one of those situations. I am just stunned that the greatest coach of all time was available and a couple of these organizations didn't even reach out to him, Ryan. They didn't even call him. It, it, isn't that crazy? I just... I. I I, it baffles me. I know he's had the problems the last couple of years, whatever. He's the GOAT, and it, I'm shocked that he's not going to be on the football field this year. Um, do you think that Vrabel um, maybe goes goes anywhere else as like a, a defensive coordinator? No, or? I, I think he's going to do – I think he's going to have the Doug Peterson round. I think he's – and Mike McCarthy or whatever. You know, he's going to have the year off – and then next year, Payton, when all these jobs, yeah. yeah, all these jobs become available because he's still young. He's not tarnished. You know, I, I think his the last two seasons of Tennessee was a little fresh and it scared some people off. A year removed when a couple of these organizations have an awful year and they're just going to want some stability. Vrabel's going to be at the top of the list. Mayo, we, we gave Mayo one year. Yeah. Yeah. One he, in 16 he, he wasn't felt, good enough. <laughs> he felt so bad. Uh, we're going to bring in Vrabel like we should have in 2024. Watch him win Thanks the division. That'd for, be great. <laughs> well, I would, I would do a backflip. I would learn <laughs> how to do one. Uh, but look, hey, that's the head coaches. Thank you for talking about them with me. Really appreciate that. Love your takes on a lot of these. 